In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord was my support in the day of my calamity. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. God, his way is perfect, the word of the Lord proves true. my support in the day of my calamity. be to God on high.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, since you never fail to help and govern those whom you nurture in your steadfast in your steadfast fear and love, work in us a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee. When one of those who reclined at table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who eats, who will eat the bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servants and said to those who were invited, Come, everything is now ready. 
But they all like alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, I must go and see it. Please have me excused. Another said, I have bought five, ox, five yoke of ox, and I will go and examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done and there is still room. And the master said to his servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, None of these men who are invited shall taste my banquet. This is the gospel of the Lord.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Our text this morning is the gospel just read. Please be seated. Blessed is everyone who will eat the bread of the kingdom of God. This morning, Jesus is teaching us in our gospel reading what it means to be his children and what it means for the end of time to enter into his kingdom. Jesus uses yet another parable this morning, and like with many of these parables, there are both the good people and the not-so-good people, the heroes and the villains, if you will. We like to identify with those more heroic characters, the good shepherd, the good Samaritan, the father in the parable of the prodigal son. We like to identify with those. But Jesus uses those parables to bring us back to our reality. They're intended to show us our true state with all its bumps and bruises along the way. We're not those heroic characters. We're the other folks. We're the sheep that is in need of being saved. We are the man who has been beaten up and even more like it, the ones who walk by that man beaten up in the parable of the Good Samaritan were the prodigal son. Or, better yet, we're the son who gets mad when the prodigal son returns. And so this morning we see people making excuses, excuses for why they are not going to the wedding feast of the man. We make excuses, lame excuses, frankly, like the ones Jesus mentions. I've bought a field. I must go and see it. Please have me excused. Or I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I must go examine them. Please have me excused. Or another, I have married a wife, and I cannot come. Please notice how rude he is. He does not even ask to be excused. He just walks on by. I cannot come to the banquet. I must go into my field and look at it. All of these men fail to look back at the field that they have just bought. And I'm afraid that the plot of land is going to vanish while he is at the banquet. Likewise, is the man with his oxen, he feels like they are going to vanish as well if he does not go and tend to them right away. And the final excuse in getting married, I cannot be, I cannot be, I cannot come and because I have just brought in my own wife. Maybe he's more interested in the pleasures of marriage than of the pleasures of the banquet feast that will have no and, needless to say, excuses, excuses, excuses. So what excuses have we made? Have we put God before, uh, have we put our, uh, have we put God this week ahead of everything else this week? Have we been looking for that extra hour of sleep or extra hour of work or play or have put our families and friends ahead of that? Immediately after this, Jesus goes on to declare, if anyone comes after me, he must deny his, himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And later he also writes, if anyone comes after me and does not hate his own father and mother, his own wife and children, his own brother and sister, yet even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That immediately follows what we saw this morning. We are to fear and love and trust in God above all things. Else we have broken the very first of the commandments. You shall have no other gods. And why would we give up the gift of eternal life that Jesus offers in his banquet with word and sacrament for the mundane and earthly things? Why would we do that? When we give up God's banquet for earthly things, he will find others whom he can share those gifts with so that his kingdom is full. So the servant came and reported these things to the master, and then the master of the house 
became angry and said, Go out quickly to the streets, the lanes, and the highways, and bring in the poor and crippled, the blind and the lame. Notice that he becomes angry, and instead of compelling those who he has invited already, instead of strong-arming them into coming to the banquet, he lets them off the hook, so to speak. But what don't they receive? They don't receive the banquet. The master becomes angry and doesn't make them come to the banquet, but instead invites others. God's anger is not something that we want to experience, is it? God's anger is, was that that consumed Sodom and Gomorrah, that swallowed up Pharaoh and his army, that laid waste to all the armies in Israel's path. God's anger is not something we want to experience. Here, though, God's anger is in the withdrawing of his hand and his blessing, his taking that away, taking back that invitation that he had originally given. And if you continue to refuse God and his invitation, if you continue to reject the word of his, uh, his word and his servants that he sends to you, if you are like a scoffer and not the wise and righteous man Solomon who talks about the in our Proverbs this morning, then he will leave you, he will forsake you, he will deny you his gifts in simply just giving you what you want and stepping back, letting you have it your way. And those gifts he will give to others, as simple as it is. He will round up the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame, and he will show favor to those who are fully aware of their wretched state, their poor, sinful state. He will show favor to those who understand that there is nothing better than to be in the banquet of the king, of the man, of their God, as he continues to give and give and give and give his life and his love for them. And after they show up, after the downtrodden yet faithful remnant of Israel arrive at the banquet, God still invites more. He says to his servant, Sir, we would, the servant says to the master, Sir, we've done what you have commanded and still there is more room. And the master says, Go out. Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel more people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, Nothing of those, none of those men who are invited shall taste my banquet. Jesus is specifically speaking of bringing into God's great and unending feast those who are not yet in the household of Israel, to the Gentiles. And this is indicated by the highways and the hedges, the places that are on the outskirts, the places that lead to the outward, if you will. And most certainly, Jesus came to invite all people to himself and to bring all people to his sacred meal. If we fail to be faithful to God, he will make new people to himself, just as he did with the Jews. He sent his servants, the apostles, your preachers, all who preached to the world, and to, true spirit, to the true spiritual descendants of Abraham, who were born by the power of his word and his invitation. He invited them from the doldrums of their sin into the flowing, moving waters of forgiveness. And he has invited you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to come and just as you are so that he may give you a feast beyond compare. And this is most certainly true, that blessed is everyone who eats of this bread in the kingdom. Those who eat of this bread in God's kingdom need not to fear his anger. 
that anger was fully met in his, de- in his son's death on the cross on, at Calvary, in the very own flesh of Jesus, that anger is stayed. Because we don't come and can't come to God, Jesus comes to us, taking on our own flesh and becoming a man just like you and just like me. He takes on our sin and becomes our Savior. Without Jesus to come and to take them on, we would be forever stuck in the spiritual doldrums of eternal death. But he comes and he provides for us the wind of the Holy Spirit who blows the works of salvation into your ears and into your hearts, giving you faith. Through his holy word and sacrament, he continues to enliven you, to forgive you, and to make you his own. We are carried along through the doldrums of this world to the ever-flowing current, through the ever-flowing current of our baptisms as we continue to live in them day after day after day. There we are partakers as he gives to us the very bread of life, the bread of immortality in his own body and blood that we received this morning, as we are partakers in the bread of life. And as we are partakers in the bread of life, we are partakers in Jesus Christ himself for you and for the forgiveness of all of your sins. God has not withdrawn his hand from you, my friends, He has neither left you nor forsaken you. And the proof of that is right before your very eyes. And his word has declared it. And his sacrament continues to give it to you as well. Jesus is still here in this place. As he is here in all of our places of worship and with our friends and family as we are the family of Christ. Brothers and sisters, made one through his word, made one through his blessed sacraments. Jesus still comes to this place. It is right that we should continue to repent of our sins and to approach this altar, the altar of the Lord, that we may be continued partakers in the great banquet feast of the king and his kingdom. For it is true indeed, blessed is everyone who eats the bread in the kingdom. Come, the the table is ready, the feast is here for you this morning. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. The peace which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you, through your word, you have called us to the great supper. We implore you to enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may not hear your word without fruit, but prepare ourselves rightly for your kingdom and allow ourselves 
to be not allow ourselves to be hindered by any worldly care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send forth your servants from all quarters of the earth that your banquet may, hall may be filled. Keep them steadfast in preaching and bless and the blessed invitation of the gospel, that all the hungry and weary sinners may find righteousness and nourishment in Jesus Christ, who has made everything ready by his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be diligent, O Lord, with all those who serve uh, in the highest, in the high duty of father and mother, and to all who guard and rear children. In your word and deed, let their lives show forth the blessings of Christ, the certainty of his mercy for sinners, and the primacy of the means of grace by which faith is created, strengthened, and preserved to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve in peace our land, and uphold uh, the na our nation's leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and Eric, our governor. Enable our leaders, lawmakers, judge and judges to govern according to your will and not contrary to your order, knowing that all authority under heaven comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Give comfort to the sick and lonely and to those who mourn. Hear our prayers for all in need, especially Marilyn, Izell, Angie, Steve, Bryce, Marilyn, Bill, Bernice, and Jerry. You are the Lord who feeds uh, and nourishes those uh, in your wisdom. So help and turn uh, us to you in faith and help us find whatever you know that we need and the answers that you, according to your gracious favor. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord God, by you have brought your kingdom to us in your Son, who has entered into our flesh for our salvation. Curb our hearts from all, miser from all misery and miserable attitudes that find your gifts in our own pleasure. Give to us instead a hunger for what is needful and a desire for your supper as often as your mercy invites us to it. Grant repentance and faith to all who receive the sacrament this day in Jesus' own body and blood that it may strengthen us according to your, according to your mercy and join us to the Lamb adored by all the company of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we have remembered the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious death and resurrection, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he stands as our great high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, all glory, honor, worship we give. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. It's good to be with you again this week. Uh, Pastor Weirgo will be back next week. Uh, some things to note in the bulletin. There is Bible study in between services this morning. We'll continue a look at the lessons for this morning as we looked at the lessons last, yet, uh, the previous Sunday's morning. Uh, please also note uh, that uh, the, uh, the service schedule change. As of June 20th, we'll be going back to the one service at 9 o'clock. So that's June 20th. Not next, yeah, that is next Sunday, right? 
Is it? Yeah, that's next Sunday. Holy cow. June's almost done. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, also the meeting schedule as well uh, with uh, the council meeting uh, today at 1130 and then the voters assembly at the end of the month, I believe on the 27th. Other than that, please continue to sign up for VBS and uh, have a great rest of the week. God's blessings for you as we begin a new week.